So, uh, the second film, we're going to talk a little bit about how time travel movies are really weird and to how creepy ass voyeuristic men staring at women are creepy ass and voyeuristic and I don't like it in my cinema. So <laughs> we'll start with time travel. The Oh, yeah, I should also say the movie I watched was, uh, we could, you saw the title on the movie, on the video, but whatever. Anyways, I watched Tony Scott's Deja Vu. Now it's got, go read its Wikipedia page to, to read about how the film writers, the screenwriters, um, didn't like the final product and that they blamed Tony Scott for all of the plot holes or whatever. I didn't notice the plot holes. Uh, so I don't know. What I did notice was two things. The time travel has the same problem that a lot of time travel has. Now the screenwriters talked to some sci actual science people to try to make the science behind this, this, uh, time travel a little, make a little more sense. But so the way they explain it is sort of the river theory where you have point A and point B and then you're in point B and you go back to some point before point A and alter it and you branch off with a new version and then the original version disappears because you have the new version. This kind of works a little better than some of the other time travel that's been used prior because while the other branch disappears, it disappears after you left that branch. So the branch existed when you left it, right? And when you changed the course. But that course doesn't rely on the other version that's now disappeared to exist to exist anymore because the change happened after you came back, I think. So I, what I'm saying is I don't think it's one of those time loops where if you changed it, you wouldn't have been able to come back to change it, right? I think it explains it enough to make it work that you can both come back from one branch and change things and have another branch exist and have your original branch still not exist because it doesn't need to exist anymore because it did exist at one point. I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> they tried to make it make sense in the movie. I'm just, just, just going to go with it because it's science fiction, whatever. As far as I know, time travel doesn't exist. Um, so that aspect of the film did as best as it can do. Uh, there was a lengthy car chase that made me go, why? Um, this had a cast that I really enjoyed because other than um, Denzel Washington, it was also Paula Patton who... I love, and she had a really bad romance comedy a few years ago, and she needs to get better scripts. She's also really great in Idlewild, if you haven't seen that one. Um, Jim Caviezel, who I always like, and Time Travel Double Feature, Jim Caviezel, you could do um, Frequency. Val Kilmer, Bruce Greenwood, who's always good, and Adam Goldberg with, like, the greatest hair he's ever had in a movie, and he's had some pretty good hair in movies. What I didn't like about the film was a there's a big section of the film where they're um, using this time travel surveillance technology to follow the Paula Patton's character around. And at one point, like, very pervily follows her into a shower. And there's, a, there's like, a joke about it. And the guy, like, is supposed to change the thing. And the one other woman in the entire movie, because there's, like, eight dudes and two women, um goes like is there a reason we need to be doing this so it's nice that they brought her they had the other woman sort of be like dude can we not but the fact that all of the men there were that creepy just doesn't make me really want to be friends with men like ever if <laughs> all men are going to be that creepy without thinking like um, you should as a person know when you're being creepy um and invading privacy in a way that you really don't need to do and the fact that it's like had all the men just being voyeuristic like that made me a little uncomfortable. Um, and, and women shouldn't have to point that shit out. Like men should know better. So that made me uncomfortable. Um, and I guess you're supposed to buy that it's sort of a romance by the end, but there's this creepy sort of thing at the beginning where Denzel's like looking at the dead version of Paula Patton and, um, in a real, just, creepy ass way um it's it's creepy like Laura but in Laura 
he's at least just looking at a portrait and not like her cadaver. And especially in the book version of Laura, you sort of under realize that the story there is that that um the story that Vera Casper at least was trying to tell was that men create these ideas about women and that the reality of women is much messier and much more complicated than this idealized voyeuristic picture that you have um and it's funny that I was watching this as Vertigo is on TCM right now because (laughs) people are tweeting about Vertigo and I was talking about how I hate that movie as well so voyeuristic obsessions of women I'm not I'm not too into um but this would be an interesting like through line if you watched Laura and then Vertigo and then Deja Vu and just sort of looked at how filmmakers have been creepy towards women uh with detectives (coughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, for decades. Maybe it's time for women to be creepy with men. I don't know. Uh, so this was 2006's Deja Vu. It's directed by Tony Scott. Stars Denzel Washington. And I've got one more Denzel Washington movie I'm watching before I go to bed tonight. So. Oh, yeah, one last thing. So this was shot in New Orleans prior to Hurricane Katrina. But then they had to then Hurricane Katrina happened and they had to finish it after Hurricane Katrina and so it's dedicated sort of to the people of New Orleans but it's a little it felt a little um it's unfortunate that they were already filming it there because then after releasing it after the fact feels a little uh gross um but I do like that the main villain domestic terrorist dude is a creepy zealot white white man because that's generally what we've come to notice in uh our domestic terrorists here in america is they tend to be creepy zealot white men so you know props to having that sort of foresight um anyways deja vu 2006 i don't know it's not terrible it's not great if you like your sci-fi with some time travel mixed in This is a movie for you.